Hi FM, your station of choice since 2008. We've spoken with him before, Dr. Franz Cronier. He's the former CEO of the South African Institute of Race Relations. We wanted to get his perspective and his thoughts on the ICJ application by the South African government. Dr. Franz Cronier, good morning. How are you? Uh, very well in you. I am well, thank you. The I would imagine, given your thoughts when we've spoken before about South Africa really being the proxy or the useful idiot um, of uh, Iran and uh, and and allies, this probably came as no surprise to you. Yeah, no, no, no. The not no surprise at all. The South Africans have for an extended period of time been fronting an Iranian strategy to do two things. The first is to so poison opinion against Israel in the Western world that military aid to Israel becomes increasingly conditional. And secondly, to so traumatize and stigmatize young Jews around the world that service in the IDF becomes increasingly controversial Mm, mm. and later you fracture internal Israeli consensus on security policies. And if both of those objectives can be met at once, the military aid becomes conditional in how it's used, young Jews become, find it very difficult to consider service in the IDF, Mm. then the tech and financial and military advantages that Israel holds over Iran's proxy forces in Gaza, the West Bank, uh, Lebanon, Syria and Iraq is eroded to a point where Israel is vulnerable to uh, being overrun. So in the same way that you you can think of Hamas, as, as you know, as an Iranian proxy, it fights a physical war against Israel with guns and bombs. The South African government is the same thing as Hamas. It's, 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 it's an Iranian proxy, and its role in the war is to fight the ideological and ideas war, to stigmatize Jews around the world. And the two wars work together. They feed off each other. And that is how to understand South Africa's case at The Hague. So is the question is uh, obviously is, is South Africa complicit? Well, of course they are. Uh, are they knowingly complicit in the strategy, or are they just being manipulated? Oh no 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 no! They're entirely complicit in the strategy. The the South Africans are very expert at this kind of ideological warfare. They were trained by the best people. Um, they visited General Jap in Vietnam. Now, Jap was the North Vietnamese commander whose expert manipulation of public opinion saw the um, North Vietnamese beat the military might of the U.S. in Southeast Asia. And later, the famous remark on Jap's victory was that the Americans lost in the living rooms of the USA, not Mm. in the jungles of Southeast Asia. And that's true. They were later trained by the East Germans and the Soviets, who were at the time the masters of the art. And they applied those tactics that they learned with great effect to beat the economic and tech and military might of the apartheid administration here. They they forced uh, the whites into negotiations not through a, a ground war, uh, there, was, there was very little of that, but, mm. but through an ideological war. But the South African, the ANC that did that 30, 40 years ago, is today a very different organization. And you will all be familiar with state capture. You, you know what that is. That's the selling of state institutions to the highest bidder. And what has happened in the Iran case is that South Africa's foreign policy structures have been sold to the Iranians. It's, it's state capture, no different to, to attempts to take over the revenue service and Mr. Zuma or whatever. It's the, it's the auctioning, so it's, it, it, it's, it's a strategic transaction. And the South Africans, I'd suggest to you, are not 
simply pawns in this, they would be able to advise the Iranians. And you'll remember our foreign minister went to Tehran. Immediately after the attacks. Following the 7th of mm, October mm, attacks. Mm. Now that was to discuss strategy on how to use these events. And, and following from that comes this, this, which is politically a very clever case against Israel. The Israelis completely flat-footed, as they were on October the 7th. And that's an important insight to have. On, on October the 7th, Israelis are flat-footed. There's the, there's the Iranian proxy fighting the physical war with guns and bombs and, and paragliders. Again, flat-footed. And this time it's the second proxy, the South Africans fighting the ideological war. And that is something that must be of great concern to anyone who has an interest in the survival of liberal democracy in the Middle East. Well, it's actually not really only in the Middle East because this is, uh, it's, it's almost as though Israel is, is the new Vietnam. It is, it's, it's an ideological war that might be taking place in one area, but it's about the whole world, isn't it? Well, well yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, I mean, the difference is obviously to Vietnam, but, but you, yeah, you're sure. right in, in, in the sense that um, after Israel for Iran is the West. Hmm. And you get these crazy American college kids running around, you know, queers for Palestine from the river to the sea. Um, why Israel is, is very important and, and why people who appreciate liberal democracy should be very invested in its, in its, in its success and survival and, and the just nature of its conflict against an extremely dangerous adversary. Israel is doing the world a great favor. It is fighting. Islamic extremism in its backyard with its own troops so that young kids in the Western world might one day not have to do that in, in whatever way the conflict plays out. But I assure you, let Israel fall, which the South African strategy to, 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 to cut off the Western aid, make it conditional to a point that Israel's battlefield commanders can't use it as they see fit, and fracture support, uh, fracture young Jewish opinion about the IDF, then Israel can fall. Uh, don't, is, is, mm. don't, don't, it's from 1948. Israel has come very close. Perilously close. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's this, there's, 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 this, there's this, this great mythology of, of the Israelis always win and they, and they always mm. beat mm. them at the last mm. moment. Mm. That doesn't mean it's always going to happen. 100% right. And, and the, the attack the South Africans are fronting in terms of Israel's longer term survival is much more dangerous than the one that is being fronted by Hamas and Hezbollah. Yes, because in, in, is essentially what it's trying to do is, is uh, tie one of Israel's hands up and make sure that, that yeah. it almost becomes impossible, and it becomes impossible for every nation to, to fight see, terror. Hamas, Hamas can't beat Israel, and nor can Hezbollah, even with Hezbollah's far superior forces and mm. arsenal of weapons. They can't beat the Israelis. The, 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 the Israeli uh, uh, economic and military machine is too strong. But weaken that machine by cutting off the aid and destroying the morale of young Jews around the world. That, that you, you're so traumatized of being Jewish because of the stigmatization that, that South Africa did so brilliantly. It was a very fine effort at stigmatization. Every anti-Semitic trope in history wrapped into one mm, and presented mm. in two hours. Absolutely. If that succeeds, it is very difficult to see how Israel survives into the longer term. So this is a very dangerous moment. Mm, mm. The, uh, what did you think about, uh, we don't really have a lot of time, but what did you think about yesterday's presentation? I thought it was a brilliant display of stigmatization and propaganda. Mm. Um, uh, it, it, it's a display that is put on by by people who are masters of the art, and the South Africans are. I think some of the attorneys appearing are, 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 are useful idiots, mm. but the the overall strategy. And look, the strategy. There, there, there's some foolish people around who say things to me such as, "Well, they, they don't know if the Israelis will will lose the case in the end." That's completely irrelevant. The purpose of the case is not to win it. Winning it would be a, a would be a bonus. The purpose of the case is to, for days and days and later weeks and months on end, 
to associate Israel with genocide, with genocide as they've done with apartheid. Because if you're a, if you're a normal person mm-hmm. who goes to work, runs your little business, you're not a, a spend your time thinking about affairs of state. If you're exposed to the kind of manipulative, propagandized information the South Africans put out yesterday, there is no way that over time you are going to remain sympathetic to what the Israelis are doing. And that's the purpose of the case. Winning it at the end is, 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 is a bonus, but, but the, 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 the loss, the defeat, the damage is that Has the a, case is being yeah, hurt. Absolutely. That is the success for, for Iran. Absolutely right, Franz Cornier. That's where we do need to leave it. Fascinating and uh, actually uh, quite a devastating conversation, but conversations that we need to have.